Right now, I could try and come up with an awesome voiceover to try and describe how Ted Miller is the best shed hunter ever. Instead, I'm just going to let this footage speak for itself. And he's still not done. Welcome to the White Knuckle Web Show. Is that not the most epic sit in a tree stand? I'm pretty sure it's a yes it is. That's all I want every year right there. Look at this thing. What do you think of that? That is huge. Bam! Perfect. Came right in. Find all those antlers. That's a lot of antlers. You must be the world's greatest shed dog. What do you say we get off the couch and go look for some more antlers? What do you say? There you go. Oh, let's go. More antlers. Go, let's go. Oh, find a shed. Well, what we're doing, uh, starting to look for a few antlers here. Uh, this is one of my better spots. Uh, I've found quite a few antlers here over the years. It's a nice, real thick bedding area, kind of south facing slope. But uh, we just kind of walked in here today, uh, see if we could find something. On this spot, we we don't really hunt all of it at a time. We'll just maybe hunt half of it. That way, if there's any bucks in here still have their antlers, uh, hopefully we won't spook them out of the area. We'll just kind of come back in a week or so and maybe hunt the other part of it, just uh, just to keep the bucks in the area. That way, you don't you don't want to walk through all your cover all at one time. Uh, you scare something out, and then you scare him again, and uh, you might spook him out of the you know out of the section you're in. But uh, anyway, we're walking up this trail here, and uh, we uh, got one spotted up here, so we'll take a walk up here and see what it is. Well, it looks like a pretty good antler. Uh, four point side there, right here in this bedding area, actually just kind of laying on the trail here. So uh, we'll just kind of work work in here a little bit and uh, see if we can find another one or two. Well, I uh, spotted another antler here, I think. Uh, still on the same hillside, real brushy. Uh, kind of south facing slope. Uh, we had about a foot of snow about a month ago and it's kind of melded off and a few bare spots uh, where the deer like to bed, I think. so. Uh, We'll walk down here and see what this one is, but looks like a fairly decent antler here. That's a pretty cool find there. Heavy duty. It's actually uh, <laughs> froze down a little bit here, I guess. Huh. Look at the palmation on that. That is cool. An extra kicker there. This is this is the same area I found that. Well, it's been years ago, but I found them three uh, drop tined sets of antlers over three or four years. There, he was heavy duty, palmated like that. I bet, but that's kind of genetically related to him, but. Uh, that's a nice antler there. 
I actually have two other exact mates to him from years past. It's a real remote spot back here. They like the winter. Thick, thick cover. Kind of a southern exposure. Probably my favorite shed spot on the planet. I see the squirrels have got to it a little bit. It's probably been shed a while. It looks like it's uh, got the tips of the beam and this point and this point and the brow chewed off. Kind of reminds me of a poem I once wrote uh, about squirrels. Squirrels are cute, all fluffy and red. But when I find a chewed antler, I wish all squirrels did. <laughs> and uh, there's why right there. But anyway, nice antler, and uh, maybe we can find the other half of it around here somewhere. Let's go. Oh. That's pretty cool, another find here. It's kind of neat how the snow melded around it or whatever. So it's obviously been covered up with snow and I think the snow's melded and kind of left that one little spot there, but. Oh, it's not too bad. Look, shed dog, another antler. Got a long main beam, short tines. Broken off brow tine. Pretty cool. Hey. Doke. Look at him. Here. Here. Antler. Yep. That's what you're looking for. Antler. Kind of walked out of the heavy brush here and uh, kind of walking some open pasture with a few hedge trees in it. Uh, Again, south facing slope, and uh, I think we made a, another pretty good find here. Uh, we'll walk down and check it out, but it, it looks like it could be a mate to that uh, heavy duty one we got here. Oh, I think it is. That's pretty cool there. But right here's the, here's the mate to it or whatever, so. No question it's a match or whatever. So squirrels haven't got to that one. It's kind of laying out here in the pasture. That's the one we just found up there in the heavy brush bedding area. Dark antler. Pretty palmated. Uh, it's probably a quarter of a mile walking up this draw in pasture and found the mate to it. This is actually a little, maybe not as much webbing, but pretty antler. Pretty cool to find both of them. That doesn't happen too often. Beautiful antler. That's the type of buck there that give him two or three years and he could really be something special there. I'm just betting this buck has got some genetics of that, that drop time, same area actually. He was narrow, heavy duty, dark antlered, just like these. Not not real big, but you know, he's that's a real young deer I would guess. At a max three and a half probably, but not too wide a spread, but heavy duty. I like I like mass in an antler. <laughs> and uh, you can't ask for more than that right there. Extra stickers going. Beautiful deer. Well, we've been walking down this trail here, uh, still in some pretty thick cover back in uh, the other side of the property here. Uh, just kind of following the trail. Uh, it's not really a bedding area. It's kind of on a north facing slope here down the bottom, but uh, pretty good antler up here, I think. So just laying here, we'll go up and check it out, see what it is.
Grows down a little also, I guess. Uh, not too bad of antler. A long main beam. Maybe just a little bit short on tine length. I guess I'm used to saying that, I guess. but uh, Probably a fairly young deer. But uh, once they get short tines, it seems like they always have short tines. I don't know why that is, but uh, still a nice buck, though. Another pretty good find. Pretty good day. You having fun? Found quite a few sheds. Yep. Pretty cool. Hey. I don't think you found this. Hey. I'm pretty sure that's my antler shed dog. Hey. Give me that. Hey. Hey. Don't be chewing up my stuff. I'm pretty sure this is my antler. Hey. I think I found this one. I think this shed dog still needs a little work. This year we are excited to partner with Real World Wildlife Seed. They truly are the best in the industry. Check out this video to see why. And this Thursday, be sure to check out our Facebook page as we give away some seed to one lucky winner. Hey, we're in Indianapolis, Indiana at the 2015 ATA show talking to Kevin from Real World Wildlife Seed. We actually started using their seed in 2014 and it's the best stuff out there. So Kevin's going to talk a little bit about some of their products. One thing about our company is, is we want people to do side-by-side -side testing. That's how we learned in our products. We've got all blends from brassicas, soybeans, upland games, harvest salads, oats. We've got all those blends that a lot of the other major companies have. What we've done is try to sell you a better product and more of that product. So when you do a side-by-side -side testing, it comes out that our product stands out above others. And we, we, we try to strive to tell everybody, do those side-by-side -side tests yourselves. We've got a video out. It's a dollar DVD you can buy or we can send them to you, you can look at. It basically just educates you on why our company is a little bit different. Everybody always claims that. But we sell it in the bag and guys that do the testing side-by-side -side will see that there is a difference between real world wildlife seeds products and the other ones on the market. I have a background in horticulture, like I was telling you, and about 22 years, what I call in the green industry, mm -hmm. and just seed labels alone, yeah. you're getting more product for your money, bottom line. Two years ago, we started using the Ozonics Easy Mount Attachment, something that they came out with, and it makes everything so much easier. Basically, as soon as we get into the tree, the very first thing we're doing is screwing the Ozonics on to go ahead and get that Ozonics unit and go ahead and get that air blowing uh, to help us out. And basically, with this attachment that goes on to the backside, it's simply, once that unit's on there, you've got a single tab, and this just simply slides right down on there and it holds the unit in place. It's a lot faster, uh, it's less time that you're spending trying to, trying to screw that in. And it's basically made our lives a lot easier and I suggest anybody that's running Ozonics to definitely use one of these to help you out.